Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Monday morning to you all. Hope you guys are having a great start to your day and a great start to your work. We got you an update on what potentially could happen in the weather world for today for your Monday, May the 23rd. I'm expecting some active weather. You know, we were talking last night about uh, the tropical energy, tropical system, whatever you want to call it. It made landfall around, I would say, just after midnight last night on the Panhandle of Florida. And let me tell you, it looks more impressive right now than it did right before landfall, which, you know, doesn't make a whole lot of sense considering the fact that normally that they're strongest, obviously, over water. But it looks pretty impressive this morning over Alabama and then portions of western Georgia. I'm about to show you that here in a second. But I'm a little concerned today that there's going to be an increased tornado threat. In fact, you know, I'm going to show you the latest storm prediction center here in a second. And right now, it's just a marginal risk for a 2% chance of a tornado in a certain region I'm about to show you. But I'm starting to think that maybe here in the next outlook, the updated outlook, it might increase. But let's just talk about this and try to figure out what's going to happen. If you guys have not subscribed, definitely consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. You guys got anything I can pray about this morning, please put it in the comments below so I can do so and others can do so too. So let's get going this morning. Let's take a look at Water Vapor Loop. Not going to look at this very long. Um, really, you see basically the brighter colors, the, the brighter whites, if you will. That is where there's more moisture in the air and in the, in the atmosphere in general. So you look at this big blow up and convection right here. That is from that tropical energy Invest 90L that made landfall last, last night in the Panhandle of Florida. It never was named a depression. It was never obviously named a storm, so it did not take any kind of name. But let me tell you, um, it could have got away with it. I tell you what, you know, it really... Um, I think the lack of blow up and convection early yesterday afternoon really uh, kind of kept some eyes off of it early on when if it was, you know, it potentially could have been deemed maybe a depression, maybe a weak storm. You know, there was a lot of reports of 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts in areas of the pan western panhandle of Florida last night. So, um, you know, you, you got to get uh, to that around that 40 mile per hour uh, kind of threshold or higher for it to be deemed a tropical storm and therefore a named storm. But anyways, a lot of blow up of convection. If you look at radar scope right now, I mean, it doesn't take uh, any kind of rocket scientist with weather to, I mean, look at this and say, hey, that looks like it has a spin to it. And sure enough, it does. The actual low pressure is moving um, probably just north or northeast of Montgomery, Alabama right now as I speak around 7 a.m. Eastern time. And then you got this dangerous part right here. You know, I wouldn't call it dangerous right now, but we call this the tail. Normally when these low pressures ride through, normally on the east side, the east quadrant, and then the southeast quadrant, and then sometimes the northeast quadrant can be the most dangerous part of the storm, especially the weaker storms where an immediate center really isn't that strong just because it's uh, weakened and broken up. But normally with these weaker systems, you got to watch out for this tail. Over here in South Carolina and even North Carolina, a little bit later this afternoon, you got to watch this area right into here, you know, give or take. You can shift these lines a little bit. This atmosphere will probably destabilize this afternoon. And you got to watch out for this piece of energy to whip through this area. And as it does, it has a chance to put uh, basically an isolated tornado threat and a damaging wind threat. So I would not be surprised if somewhere in this area today gets upgraded to a slight risk right now. And I'm about to show you just a marginal risk. But you can see this obvious spin right. Oh, let me get my cursor back up right into here this morning. It's very, very impressive on radar. In fact, if you would have told me that this was a mid-grade tropical storm that just made landfall overnight and this is what it looks like, I mean, I would believe you. Um, so it looks more impressive right now than it did when it was just offshore the panhandle of Florida. So this will generally track probably this way or, you know, give or take west to east and then expect the worst weather to probably, you know, be basically on the eastern side of the center as this piece of energy right here kind of pulls that way, if you will. So um, we got to watch this today. This is going to promote uh, severe weather for portions of the Carolinas and Georgia here in the coming hours, really between starting now. Honestly, they just issued a, um, a mesoscale discussion talking about down here in these areas of Florida could have a tornado threat here in the coming hours. But right now, just a marginal risk right now for storms but let me tell you and, and don't hold me to it but if you won't you can <laughs> but uh marginal risk but i would not be surprised if this gets upgraded 
very small risk area to a slight risk somewhere in here, maybe including Charlotte and Columbia, maybe for really early this afternoon, and then maybe another line a little bit later this evening. But a 2% risk of a tornado in this area. We can't forget about this area too here in uh, southwest areas of Texas into western areas of Texas where we could get some supercell development for sure. And uh, just a damaging wind threat and a hell threat, no hatch regions. But watch out. I would not be surprised if a 5% risk of a tornado gets opened up for somewhere here, especially in South Carolina. But it might not happen. It might not. There's also a chance of flooding today, a slight risk. This means basically you have at least a 15% chance of flash flood guidance occurring in 25 miles at any given point, whatever your flash flood guidance is for right now. And that really all is dependent on how much rain you have got lately. So a lot of rain could fall with this tropical air mass. In fact, let's just jump right into it. Uh, let's look at the latest HRRR model. And here's the low pressure starting off around 9 a.m. Eastern time. And this starts to move into North Georgia. And at the same time, this is around lunchtime. You got nasty storms pivoting through central to North Georgia already. And then another line already starting to develop well east of this low pressure and starting to move into South Carolina. You keep this rolling here. And it's almost like you got two areas of, of energy right here. This little piece and then this little piece. So really the early as, as early as early this afternoon, you're going to have some a risk for some severe storms and potentially a quick tornado in areas of South Carolina, maybe even the Piedmont, North Carolina. And this moves through. That first little wave moves through. The low pressure keeps tracking through. And then you might have another line of storms that really develops into here. And these have that kidney bean look to them, meaning it has like that little hook signature that we really watch out for when these storms begin to take advantage of the environment. In fact, let's go on and just take a closer look at South Carolina here and North Carolina. You get this going through the afternoon hours, and uh, you, I mean, you watch out. Let's make sure these are one hour intervals. I, I hate when it does this, uh, but you're getting into about lunchtime right now, give or take an hour. Strong storms already starting to enter South Carolina, areas just uh, south of Augusta, some nasty storms here in eastern Georgia. This moves through, could pack a punch early on, maybe mid, mid the middle of the afternoon this afternoon. And then more storms potentially from the HRRR model saying could develop later this evening around dinner time, give or take an hour. And these potentially can produce also. So you got to watch out for these storms. Let me see if I can get this to 18 hours here. And uh, let's see if we can get all the way to this time frame. Here it goes, you know. And these will move through probably around 6, 7, 8 p.m. through the middle of South Carolina and will continue to move through and then eventually weaken. So these storms could produce. They really could. Damaging winds, hail, probably not really a big threat today with this kind of air mass in place and the dynamics you're dealing with. But let me tell you, damaging winds and isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. I would not be surprised you get a couple tornado warnings throughout the morning hours and the afternoon hours across the southeast today. And really, these low pressures tend, just like, low pressures that you see with uh, just regular low pressures associated with troughs, um, they tend to bring their own little low-level jet on the east the southeast quadrant of these low pressures. It's the same with any kind of tropical system. And uh, that will be the case, and this will pivot over upstate South Carolina, central South Carolina a little, a little bit later today. A little bit of a 25, 35, 40 knot low-level jet will whip through. And then you mix that with uh, that this low-level tropical moisture that you got at the surface with dew points rising almost to 70. You know, these tropical systems tend to bring some very humid air. So very humid air mass over Georgia and South Carolina, Carolinas today um, as this uh, basically this tropical moisture moves in ahead. And then you got the rainfall expected today. Really between now and tomorrow morning could get a few inches of rain. Watch out for flash flooding, especially in the foothills, Piedmont, North Carolina coastal plains of North Carolina, and then a lot of South Carolina. But unfortunately, for you coastal regions that really need the rain, you guys are starting to get under some uh, nasty drought conditions in the immediate coastal regions of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. It looks like you guys will get kind of robbed today, but I think you all will have a chance to see some rain today. But, you know, a few inches is possible. Atlanta could see a few inches between now and the next several hours. Um, you know, maybe an inch of rain in Columbia, but, you know, it just, it's just it's give or take here. Um, South Central U.S., some storms could fire up a little bit later. Um, we've seen this a lot over the last few weeks. And just watch out for supercells. Damaging winds, hell is the biggest threat out here. Tornado threat also. Um, but really watch out here if you're in western areas of Texas throughout the entire area, especially 
uh, southwest and southern areas of Texas, really talking about like the Fort Stockton area and surrounding towns in this region could definitely see some severe storms today. Um, but I think that these quickly will turn into more of a linear threat as you work your way into the late evening hours, meaning they'll turn to more of a line of storms. And this will eventually set the stage for, I think, a few days of rain for areas of Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. And here it goes. We'll look at the latest long range. This takes us all the way out until around Wednesday, I believe. And just rounds of showers and storms continue throughout the next 48 hours. And I think this will bring a lot of rain to areas of Dallas, Fort Worth, especially points east. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit tonight. But in general, you look at the eastern U.S. as a whole. Um, showers and storms possible through Kansas, Nebraska, and all of the Dakotas for sure. But the severe weather threat up here, not very high, just more of some storms. Uh, so don't expect anything super severe or anything like that, if severe at all. Just uh, more of widespread rain in areas of uh, South Dakota and Nebraska for sure. Um, as far as the temperatures today, are relatively cool. In fact, this will be a rain-cooled air um, here in Nebraska and areas of South Dakota where you guys might get locked into the 50s and 40s due to that those clouds and that rain. Um, but, you know, across the Ohio Valley, more like a spring-like day, uh, the Midwest and the north-central U.S., the Great Lakes region, a little bit nippy today up here in this region. We're just 50s and 60s for highs, but, you know, the Mid-South Obviously, the further south you go, you get into the 80s and more of a tropical air mass. But basically, Kentucky, the Ohio Valley, just 60s today for highs, maybe a few 70s. And the I-95 corridor with the big cities in the northeast and the mid-Atlantic, you guys will get into probably the, I don't know, the 60s and 70s. Interior regions, probably 60s and 50s. Um, but overall, not a very warm day. The only area that you're going to be warm and uncomfortable today ahead of this uh, big-time tropical air mass is basically the Car Carolinas. Georgia and Florida, where you guys um, will definitely be into the 80s, close to 90, and very humid today. Out west, uh, pretty quiet weather. Nothing really to speak on. Some showers, definitely in Montana, northern Idaho, and Washington State are definitely possible. But other than that, as far as temperatures, uh, around average to just below average, especially for this portion of the western U.S., where you have troughing in place. But you know, if you're basically, you know, in California, the coastal regions, the valley regions, warmer than average, definitely. But in general, nothing too crazy compared to average. That's all I got, guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, I'm starting to see hints in the long range for the first part of June that maybe we could get some tropical activity in the Caribbean and maybe just the Western Atlantic in general. We'll talk a little bit about that tonight. But that's all I got. God bless everybody. Hope you guys have a great start to your week, a great Monday, and uh, talk to you soon.